Welcome to Let's Talk Possibility. Tonight we're talking to David and Mongezi about how to empower your mind. Thank you for listening. Hi, good evening everyone and welcome to Let's Talk Possibility, the show where we talk about what's possible. And tonight we are going to really be looking at what's possible when we embrace change. Because we have this tendency, I think, as, as humans to not like change. We run away from it and there's actually so much else that's possible when we, we don't do that. And in studio with me tonight, I have David Swart. Yeah, I've called the, the mindset expert. <laughs> you, you do a lot of change management. I mean, you've done it extensively within the IT world. world and more right. specifically, recently you, you actually did your master's in, it was um, working out why people overspend uh, yes. and get into to debt. And what came out of there was a lot about the mindset. And, and from that, you've then taken a lot of information and pulled it into the way you help companies with their, their change yeah. management. True. And so yeah. welcome. Very really interested to hear what you have to say about the mindset. Thank you, Delana. And we also have Mungisi Mtati from WordStar. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> now, I was quite interested what happened if I put a mindset expert with a word starter. <laughs> so we're going to find out tonight um, um, what, what comes out of it. Be gentle, David. <laughs> <laughs> well, he does something very interesting is he gets um, the word going, starting by, by just talking to people and spreading it through his networks and whatever needs to get out there. So he also has some interesting ideas about change. But yes, I, Maybe just to, to kick off more of our, our discussion is, um, I think change is just such a part of life, especially in today's world. I mean, when is anything, how much change have we experienced just in this year, you know, let alone in the last 10 years and, and 20 years. So, so technology is just speeding up. We have so much change to deal with. And yet most people, you know, that I find as, as myself as a coach, I deal with helping people change the whole time. So many people resist change. They, they hate it. They run away. They want to keep everything the same. They want to be in control. Is that like similar to your experiences? What do you think? Very much so, Talana. Yes, I think um, I would say most people don't like change. Yeah. We resist change, I think, as a matter of, 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 of fact. Um, so when, when we are confronted with change, uh, we look at it and we look at it as a threat. We look at it as, um, you know, I've got to change my world or my way of doing my habits. Uh, and anyone that ever tried to stop smoking and or to go on a fitness regime yeah, or like, to yeah, go on a starting. diet, <laughs> they've gone through change and self-imposed change. And we realized, like one lady said, I keep on lay losing weight, but it keeps on finding me again. <laughs> and that's what happens with change. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a constant thing. And it's, I think it's a quite a natural thing for us to resist change because it actually is part of our, um, uh, what are called instincts to protect ourselves. If you think about the fight flight, you know, the more we understand what's going on around us, the more likely we are to survive if we go right down to that, that basic instinct. So I think there's a bit in today's world, we don't have the, you know, lions coming after us yeah yeah <laughs> that level of of danger in our world a lot of it is the, the change is just the amount of information and the circumstances and the people we interact with because another like a question just came to mind while you were talking to what you're introducing david now mm -hmm. and the fact that he did you do a lot of change management what is our because you mentioned money as one of the things as well and what i'm seeing a lot of is that the more people have money the more they try to sort of have this rapid change around themselves with what they buy now yeah. the question i've got is what is our relationship between change and money or change or and access to yeah. more money than yeah. we did before that's a lovely question First of all, just to think about what is what is in our most of our minds about money. We link money and the toilet very closely. You know, we talk about <laughs> that person is stinking rich. Yes. Or he, he or she is, has a S full of money. Yes. And we say money flows like water, like flushing a toilet. So our mind is very much geared to money is something not good, not nice. Um 
And then also we say money is the root of all evil. So no wonder we don't want money in our pockets. We say let we use this evil things and buy stuff which mm. are not easy. Yes. Oh, well, not not evil. So we turn it quickly into something. And then also what 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 we do now is we spend already what we are going to earn in two or three or four years time, and that's why we are in such a debt. Um, so so why do we buy all these things? It's 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 to to show that we've achieved because one of the one of the basic human things is also to show other people yes. that we achieve and we achieve through things and through money. Um, now, if we can say, let's think differently about money and that money is not the root of all evil. Um, and maybe that we say, you know, become, have money in your mind first before you have it in your pocket, but just don't have money in, on your heart. Um, our money situation would be quite different. Isn't part of it also the fear of loss? So it's trying to make it tangible. You know, it's trying to turn money into a form of concept, which affects what it is, yes. into, well, here I can now feel it, see it. Uh, it's now real. That's, yeah. Uh, isn't that, and the fear of when it's intangible that it's easier to lose, where, you know, the TV, whatever in front of you is real, so it, it's where also possibly alleviating a bit of fear. Yeah, yeah, no, very, very true. For me, what was quite strange is why would normal human beings just overspend so much that South Africans, they say average, 80% of our salaries pay debt first. So we've got about 20% 20, 20 left to, to, to live off. So that fear is huge, to the fear of loss and the, and the, the other, other needs to show that, we, that we've achieved. Um, yeah, so, so, so what I would say from a change point of view, the first thing that we've got to say is, Let's think differently about money. Let's let's delve into that mindset that caused us. You know, and one can ask for yourself, for example, now where did this story come from that money is the root of all evil? Um, because I'm just just owning on to that one as a as a as a as a so, something so. that most people heard. Mm. Mm. Um, and how do you get rid of it? You've got to change the way you think about it. Um, the relationship you have with it. The relationship you have with it. Yes, yes. Because I think because I mean coming to coming to changing our thinking about it. For me, it's also about the re the relationship we've always had with money, or the relationship we've always had with that which money can bring. Whatever, whatever oh, is after that. Yeah. Whatever yes. is after access to money. Yeah, yeah. So that's. In a large, to a large extent, creates the relationship we have with money and the world that the money can bring, mm -hmm. and as a result, our relationship with the world. Yeah, yeah. So we don't even just see money as just a, an exchange of energy. We put all these these different meanings to, to it, it. Yes. Based on on what else it can bring. Yeah. So you mentioned a few things about a mindset. So so I know you you've broken down what a mindset is, and so we talked mindset, mindset, but but what actually is? What are we talking about when we yeah. say? It's Mind actually made up. Cons consists of quite a few things. And, and the first one that's quite interesting is that it's part of your temperament. And your temperament is your in the inborn you, the genetic you. For, okay. for example, part of your temperament would be introvert, extrovert. Um, and there's, there's the, you know, they've broken up the world into four major types of people. Um, the rationals, um, they, they are people, they are the problem solving the guardians, they are the people that want things to, to stay, to keep things intact. Uh, then the artisans, mm -hmm. it's the arty people that, uh, that's very, very good with, with art and, 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 um, paintings and art, that type of artwork. And then you've got the idealists and the idealists are the people people. And it must be me. Yeah, I've <laughs> tested quite a few people and it's quite fascinating to see. Those four all coming up. And when you talk to them about their temperaments and you just give a brief summary on the temperament, people, they feel so proud. They say, hmm, that's great. That, that temperament's the best temperament because it's my temperament. And that's excellent. That's good. Um, then we also get the, um, the, the, the attitude. Yeah. And attitude as a, as a mindset, actually, where did it come from? We got it from our parents. And our parents taught us to be either negative, positive, or neutral about something. And then also 
our own experiences. From through our experiences, we can change the attitude. But if you if you have somebody that grew up in a house that everything was always negative and always they always saw the negative part or the 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 the, 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 the wrong things in something, you know, is the glass half full or is the glass half empty? Yeah. Um, that again is something that's in the mindset, and it's something that we can choose to change. So attitude's already something um, that causes us to behave in a certain way that maybe we don't know. We think, this is my personality, this, was, this is who I am. Yeah, and then what can bring in feelings, values, expectations, needs and beliefs? All of those would be elements of mindset, um, which are not, you know, it's not unfamiliar words, but yeah, if you look at the maybe. belief, a belief is something that you treat as a fact about yourself, about other people, and about life. So if you treat it as a fact, that's going to rule your life. Yeah, you make it, this is the reality, that's, this is what's real. That's what's real for you, yes. So anyway, we were talking earlier about how all of these these elements that make up the mindset are actually in our subconscious, so so we're not necessarily aware of it. And be, because they, they, they're so embedded, if I can use that word, they're so conditioned in us from the way we grew up and that, that they... They almost become lenses that we see the world and we don't even realize we've got those glasses yeah, on. Yeah, that's a beautiful way to put it, yes, because those lenses will filter reality. And we use that filtered reality to make decisions. So that's why they say if 20 people see an accident happen and you ask them to write a story about the accident, you get 20 different stories because there's 20 different, different. sets of lenses that filter the information. And so, yeah, and... So none of that information is wrong. Or it's just it's, it's just it's twenty different see, perspectives. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why teamwork is so important. Because if you can learn how to say, "I'm going to suspend what I saw," and I'm going to say, "Mongizi, what did you see? Talana, what did you see?" And if each one can share what we saw, and we can then say, "I'm going to increase. I'm going to have a bigger picture or more closer to reality." Uh, yeah, more more information. Work with. More yeah, information. Much more yeah. information to work with. Yeah. So, is there a particular mindset? So, obviously, there must be a group of that, that that leads us to resist change, to not like it so much. Or maybe we should ask the question another way: Is there a mindset that leads us to embrace change, like we we were saying? in Mongezi seems to embrace change. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is, uh, it, is uh, it that yeah, level? Yeah. Again, mindset is is there because of your experiences and, and how you developed. So if you you grew up in a house positive about change and positive about things and look at the world through positive lenses, you will be change will be much easier for you. But if you are you grew up in a negative house, your mindset would have been programmed, conditioned to see change as negative. And our experiences cause us to resist change or to Embrace Embraces. change. But, you know, even even with a very positive mindset, even with um, uh, knowledge about change, we still have difficulty in change. Yes. You still have to say, you know, if I want to go on that diet, there's I a few things, things that I have to change, which in my mindset was actually this is how I, you know, that, that cappuccino. That's that's how that's how I uh, how I uh, myself treat myself. Day. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I do. So you did well. Here's your cappuccino, and now I've got to stop it. That's that's the, that type of things that's that's causing us to to not like change. So, so, what are the ways of overcoming those? Just just changing the viewpoint, or I, how you think about it. I think very. I think first of all is to be aware of it. And as Delana says, if it sits in your subconscious. And you just act, and this is my pattern, and this is my behavior pattern, and this is how I this do things. This is just things. how I am. And yeah, you accept it, and you say, then you won't know to change. But the first first thing is to say, okay, I don't behave because of who I am. I behave because of my mindset. And then you ask, you must ask your question: in the behaviors that I've expressed during the day, is there anything that I didn't like, which I'm not happy with? If you identify that, then you say, okay, now what is there in my mindset that causes me to be... Th so you, then you can lift it out. So awareness is the first thing. And then once, mm -hmm. once you're aware, you can question 
and you can dispute your mindset and say, I want it to be different. But now you've got to learn a new habit because over, depending on how old you are, how, that's how many times uh, per day, may, maybe just say once per day that yeah. you've that you've done it in certain in that certain way. It becomes yeah. like well grooved. Well, like a finger in the, the sand. More you yeah, yes, yeah, just deeper and deeper and deeper. So, in in the in the uh, um, neuroscience these days, they can they can take a picture of a live brain, and you can actually see footpaths in the brain that That's you amazing. use a certain. It's like a like a lightning. Use a certain footpath in the brain all the time. Um, when you do a specific thing at a certain, t you know, in a certain way. So you're saying, to, in order to create change, so it's becoming aware of what what, is, what the mindset is that is influencing the, creating that behavior, and then challenging it. Do is this useful? Is this what I want? You know, and then what I'm hearing is is looking at what what you want instead of that. Yes, yes, and then you've got to get it to become a new pattern. Yes. And that's where the difficulty is because you've got to re you've got to repeat it over and over and over and over like, until it's it's a new habit. Yeah, because you've got to create those new neural pathways, pathways. that new footprint in the, uh, in the brain exactly. for for that. And that the brain would want to just jump back to what it's used to. But what I find exciting is that that is possible. So, so the book we we were going to talk about tonight is Daniel Siegel's book called Mindsight. Mindsight, yes. And there's also a little clip that I found of him talking a bit about this, but it's very much his his technique, which he calls Mindsight, is is he's found a way to actually help those neural pathways develop to change. Yes. Yeah. I think it, long ago we thought that the brain doesn't change, you know, but it's actually they're finding now, as you say in the latest stuff with neuroscience, is that it changes. Yes. It can, and it does take a bit of effort, like you're saying, a lot of practice of the new Habits yes, yes. to create to make that be the new way of doing. Footprints, yeah, as you, yes. As you now, I think if, uh, what he did with a with a man of eighty in his in in, in his book, uh, where this guy grew up and like like you've, you've asked now, if, if asked, asked some, some people negative about yes. change. He grew up in a house that was totally negative, and his son took him to uh, Doctor Siegel. Because his mom was ill and his dad just couldn't function anymore. Um, and then they started talking and, and in, in his household, he never, never experienced closeness. He never experienced emotions. It was, he was, they were told to suppress it. Now, that's how he grew up and emotions, not a good thing. You know, cowboys don't cry. You don't show emotions. You've got a poker face. And now his wife is ill and he fell apart. And Siegel started with an exercise of mindset and, and, and brain integration and explaining it to him. Um, and he actually grew new connections in his brain. Wow. And That's phenomenal. his wife said That's when exciting. she got to healthy, she came back to Siegel. She says, what a wonderful thing. We had friends visiting us. And my husband, for the first time in my life, when the friends left, he put his hands around my around my shoulders and he gave me a hug. Wow! First time in his life that so he could express. It's a emotion. lovely story that that change is possible, even at, at any time. Yeah. Yes. yeah. So, Mangizi, I know you did some so asked around and asked a few people about their yes. pers perspective. <laughs> To share with us what you found. Okay. Um. Just before that, because one of the one of the one of the themes after I asked these, this, these questions around change was comfort, basically, that uh. we resist change because it, it basically means uncertainty and there'll be a level of discomfort. And David, you just mentioned now that one of the, I mean, one of the things is that one of the things that happens is that we don't, we resist change because it means something will be different and we have to question ourselves at all the levels that you mentioned. Yes. Now, in terms of just actionable steps, things that we can do to start putting, to start causing discomfort around ourselves, but levels of discomfort, which are bearable in order for us to start changing, what would those be? Wow. <laughs> I think one has got to look at it from a, from a, you can look at it from two points of view, but just maybe like, like, a, 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 take a piece, a sheet of paper and line in the middle yes. and just write all the positive things that you, that you get 
from doing things in a certain way. Yes. And then all the negative things. Now, normally you will find that it would be, there would be more positives than negatives. That's why you're doing it in a certain way. Now one has got to say, how can I strengthen the positives and how can I weaken the negatives? And, and that can help you to, to get into the chase. Is it one of, I know one of the, the other things that, said work, that works quite well is you need to decrease the activation energy. And the example is you want to go to gym. So like with the guys, some of the guys go to sleep in your gym clothes. And they say it's actually harder the next morning to get out of your gym clothes than to go to gym. So yeah, you've actually yeah. made it easier for you yourself to do the thing that you want to do. And by easing, making it easier yeah. um, and actually harder to not do, because now you actually get, you get out of your clothes to, to, to not do it. Excellent, yes. You've done things that, that instead of making it uncomfortable when you're not gymming, make it more comfortable to yeah, gym. Yeah, marvelous, marvelous. The other, other way to do it is, is by visualizing. And not visualizing yourself at the gym, but how you would look, your body would look after you've been at the gym for maybe a year and say, that is what I want to look at. And that's what I want to look like. Um, and again, that's positive reinforcement mm -hmm. to say, to do that, I go to the gym. So, but that's what I'm going to look like uh, in the end. So basically, see, start seeing and visualizing the reward itself as opposed mm -hmm. to just taking the plunge and doing it right there and then when it's more di when it's most difficult. Yeah, yeah. And the, for the mind, there's no difference between a picture of reality and, and a picture. So you can bluff the mind, um, you know, and then w what you have is you, if you have that body that you, that you desire, but you've got still, you look down and you see the big tummy and unfit, you cause cognitive dissonance. So immediately there's lots of energy uh, released to say either pull that goal back to reality or do things to get reality to be the goal. Um, and that's how one can become a millionaire as well. Be it in your head. Um, and maybe there I can tell a little story about mm -hmm. in-house where, where it happened. And I can tell it because it, it happened to my son and not to me. <laughs> we, we both read the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Yes. Kiwasaki saying, you know, the way basically the the rich dad was um well let's, let's start with his poor dad his own dad who did the normal things like we did you know you study you work hard you get a qualification that nobody can take the away teacher. from you i think it was a teacher uh, yeah and then you go to you do your job and you wait you get your uh, contribute to your pension and you have medical aid and you work hard but he says there was never enough money at home and the the rich dad was his friend's dad that went to school and stand at eight said, I want to make money. And then he evaluated school and says, this place is not teaching me how to make money. And he started in the building trade. Long, long story. And then he, so the two mindset is one says that the poor dad says, I've got to earn my money. The rich dad mindset set says, I'm going to make money. So we both read it, but my son then applied it. <laughs> And he said to me, he said, I'm going to buy a house because my friends wants to rent from me. I can buy a house. It will cost me 5,000 rand. My friends are going to pay 1,000 each. I've got six friends. It's going to bring me 1,000 rand in my pocket to have a house. Yes. So I applied it. And then he said, but they, I can now do it for flats. I can buy a flat for, which will cost me 2,000 rand a month. I'm going to get 3,000 rand rent. Dad, how many flats can I buy? Well, as many as the bank will allow you. So in the, in the end, they had 30. And then, sure. but what, what, what I forgot is in his mind, he said he bought himself a cigar and he said, I'm, at 25, I want to be a millionaire. And then I'm going to smoke the cigar. I'm not smoking, but I'm going to smoke. So in his mind, he already got it. And then the other thing, goal setting, telling your friends about it. Because then the friends jokingly ask, are you a millionaire yet? And that's you smoke that cigar, pushes yes. you itself. His reserve. <laughs> yeah, always resolve. So then he said to the bank manager, you know, prices went up. I, I'm, I'm a millionaire. The bank manager said, no, until you've got money in the bank. A million in the bank, you can't call yourself a millionaire. Luckily for him, because at the height of the property boom, he sold everything. So 30 houses, uh, 30 flats at... 200,000 200, profit, he smoked his cigar 
<laughs> they're in bed. bed. <laughs> <laughs> no, so right so after the, they the left the bank. Thing, so just the power then of visualization, telling your friends, having a specific goal, going through it helps with yeah. overcoming that, that resistance. But telling your dad about your bad diet's not doing anything about it. <laughs> that's, the, <laughs> that's the other thing. So, so my mindset about how do I get my money? Study. I went to university. I studied some more. Um, I worked harder. So my mindset about money is you earn your money. You work Very for it. Very different. And he said, you make money. But now, what? where was that? Because one of the things we spoke about earlier was how our parents program our minds to think a certain way. Yes. And your son was raised by you, but he defied that which <laughs> you have now come to know and learn. Yeah. Where did that change occur for him, do you think? I, well, we also... We also taught them to be rebels. But part of the upbringing was don't do what we say, investigate and make up your own mind. So, so, uh, was, so one of the filters in the, the pair of glasses that your son in, has is, is, is that. Yeah. To challenge yeah. and question and hence reading the same book, you, you both saw different things. Different things, yeah. yeah and, and, you know, I had years and years, you, you know, you grow up with – parents that went through the depression so my mindset about money is you know you watch it carefully you don't make debt and you don't do these things and he grew up and with a different mindset said man make as much debt as you can because so it doesn't bank. mean so what i'm hearing it doesn't mean then that, that your set of filters will be identical to your parents sometimes it can be opposite because parents are like i don't want you to be like me so they, yeah, they teach you true. they expose yeah. you to different things to opportunities they didn't have, and yeah. hence you develop a, a And also, way. even now, because even now you can say, I want to change my mindset. Mm. You do it as a voluntary process. You say, I don't want to think about things. The trick is just to find those things that's holding you back. To become aware. To become aware. Because yeah. I think awareness is half the job's done. Yeah. Once you're aware of what it is, because we do it, we, we hurt our loved ones. We do many, many things because of our mindsets. Mm. The way we. You know, just think, think about washing dishes. It's against my mindset to wash dishes. <laughs> so <we laughs> and one to, should actually do it. <laughs> we need to start wrapping up now. So what I'd love to ask both of you is what do you believe is possible if we actually embrace change? So we go through the process of, of becoming aware, looking at what's holding us back, going through the uncomfortableness of changing, actually, you know, Embrace that whole process. This, what this is, is where Mongizi can help because spreading the word <laughs> is the way we've got to go about it. So, so now, how how would one spread the word? How do you get this message out? Because that's what we've got to do. So, so basically, I mean, one of the things that I have come to learn over the past, say, four to five years has been that what, what the general population does for me, what the general population does is what I should go against. Because the general population uh -huh. does the same thing and they accomplish the same things. Excellent. So I generally go against that. I generally go where most people fear to, um, except for Hillbro. Um, <laughs> but I generally do. Um, so basically, one of the things is to, because, <clears throat> okay, I was, I mentioned this conversation to my friends a bit earlier, like the, the, this conversation that we'll be having. And one of the things that came up was we choose the path of least resistance. Mm -hmm. And I guess I've always been going toward the path of probably most resistance. Lovely. And mm -hmm. as a result, as a result, you don't know what to expect. You don't know what will challenge you as you take that path. So you rarely have anyone to advise you or you really have anyone to go to. So you have to make your own rules. Mm -hmm. So, and what happens then when you do take the, choose that path? I mean, it sounds for me, you're I mean, going one overseas. of the things, <laughs> one of the things is, <laughs> one of the things is you are up at one o'clock in the morning, still looking <laughs> for the solution. Um, but thereafter you realize, I, I realize that there, there are no rules. There are, absolutely no rules there are no boundaries so when you embrace change you realize that the boundaries are limitless that yeah. nothing holds you back except yourself mm -hmm. and it's much and it's easier powerful. when i realize it's, it's so empowering exactly yeah. it's when i realize that i'm the only one holding myself back then i want to strengthen myself even more as opposed to as opposed to thinking it's outside forces now what about your friends could you influence them to also be like that? They might be listening. Um. <laughs> so, so, David, I want to ask you, so what's important to you about, you know, what is possible 
if we get this message out that we are the only ones that hold ourselves back? What do you oh, believe absolutely. will be possible yeah, if absolutely. that message got out there? I think we determine, or our mindset determines the, our playing field. So, you know, one of the things it says, a general saying, I don't know how well, well it's tested, that Einstein used about 10% of his brain. So as normal human beings would be about 5%, and that's our mindset. We've got our little playing field there that we say, we feel safe in here. Maybe... Because our minds are so powerful, we're afraid. So, Whoa, I can do this? No, no, I'm afraid of that. <laughs> let, me, let me rather play, go back into my little little corner and, 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 and not try it. Because, yes, what one of the sayings is, anything the brain can conceive and believe, it can achieve. And it's so true. So you've got to be able to see it and visualize it and say, I can do it. Then you do it. And yeah, from, from my perspective, when, when we do all that and we actually embrace change and go through the process of creating change, I just know for me it's opened up so much more in my life. My quality of life has, has improved, even though I've gone through the hardship of, of creating change in it. Yeah, yeah. It's just the whole world looks is, is different. With, you know, when you start taking off all those glasses that don't work for you, you get a much clearer and, and brighter picture of the world. Oh, yes, yes. So... We're going to have to wrap up now. Is there any way that people can get hold of you? And I'm Mungizi, you're on, on Twitter. If anyone wants to have a chat to you. Yes, so um, they can get a hold of me on Twitter, Mungizi, or on Facebook, Mungizi Um And your website is? My website, well, I've got a blog, mungizimtati.co.za. The company, the company website is wordstart.co.za. And for anyone overseas, that Mongezi is M O N G E Z I, and then M T A T I. Yes, dot correct. Dot C O dot Z A. Yeah, and for me, it's the email, Gmail, um, <coughs> David Swart30 at gmail.com. Um, you know, I'm passionate about it, so anybody want to ask questions, so I. Yeah, probably. and you please send us your questions on, on um, chat. It's uh, chat right now, but you're on. Twitter, let's, which our Twitter is our LT, page. <laughs> LTP um, possibility. Yeah, and all the details, of course, are on the wiki. On the wiki. And right, I think that's all we have time. So thank you so much for coming through and sharing about what's possible when we embrace change. Our next show is on Monday, 14th of November, so in two weeks' time, and we're actually turning there to the world of sports. Mm, so that's going to be a very interesting um, show. And tomorrow night, if you guys want to listen in, it's called the Let's Talk Sports Show. Yeah, so anything is possible. And thanks so much for coming through and we'll thank you see for you having guys. us. Yeah, thank you. It was nice and Later. enjoyable. Cool. Goodbye. Thank thanks. Bye.